So, so teams are going to have some new rules to adjust to uh, this season, including, yes. Anthony, the new two-way player rule. Get, get us up to speed on that, and, and how are teams preparing for this? Yeah, it's been called the Shohei Otani rule, and for good reason. He's the only guy who qualifies in 2020. Uh, you had to have pitched uh, 20 innings in the previous season or made 20 starts and, excuse me, and made 20 starts as a position player with at least three plate appearances. Now, of course, Otani was on the shelf as a pitcher last season, so he kind of got grandfathered in by his 2018 numbers. So it's definitely the Shohei Otani rule. Uh, they kind of bent over backwards to get him eligible. And what this means is he doesn't count as a pitcher on the Angels roster. There's 26-man rosters now moving forward in MLB, and you, you have a maximum of a 13-man pitching staff. So the Angels basically get a free pitcher out of this. That's the benefit of having a two-way player. Um, there's other clubs that might chase this rule in 2020. Uh, the Padres acquired Jake Cronenworth. He was a minor leaguer. They got uh, in the trade where they acquired Tommy Pham from the Rays. Cronenworth has to make the club first and foremost, but if he's on the team, the hope, uh, according to manager Jace Tingler, is to get him an inning a week. Now, he can only pitch in blowouts where they're losing by more than six runs or winning by more than six runs. So it might be difficult to get him in there every week, but, you know, blowouts happen over the course of a season. So, um, you know, the, he, he would be an interesting candidate to perhaps qualify next year. And then it's a source of frustration in Reds camp because you got a guy in Michael Lorenzen who is a legitimate two-way player. Mm -hmm. Last year, he appeared in more innings in the field than he did on the mound, he, you know, around 89 innings uh, in the outfield. And he's valuable to them as a reliever. He's valuable to them as a defender in the outfield. You know, they did beef up their outfield this winter, Nick Cassianos being a key acquisition there. But, you know, he has iffy defensive metrics. So there's still opportunities for Lorenzen to impact games late in games as a defensive replacement. But unfortunately, he still counts as a pitcher on their roster. And, you know, he didn't think that was right. I, I think he has a fair argument that this rule is really offense based. And maybe there should be other another way for a player to qualify, you know, be it defensive innings or what have you, because Lorenzen is obviously a. You know, a dynamic player. They can use him to pinch run. They can use him as a defender late in games. They use him as a reliever. He's not going to make 20 starts because he's he's a reliever. Right. He has to be available out of the bullpen. So it's an interesting rule, and it'll be interesting to see how teams navigate it this year. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that's sad about it, it's almost the charm of the game, too, watching these two-way players that are effective at it, like Lorenzen, and then yeah. maybe they get penalized for not. I, I want to ask you this. What about a guy that qualifies in the minor leagues? And then he gets called yeah. to the big leagues. Does he get grandfathered in right now this year? No, it's based on major league statistics from the previous year. Now, once you accrue that status, you can be designated a two-way player. And then once you're designated a two-way player, you carry that designation for the rest of the season and postseason. Um, so, again, it, it's primarily about guys who are primarily position players who are also trying to pitch. You're, they're basically limited by this rule. You have to be a a legitimate pitcher to pitch or a two-way player. Otherwise, you can only pitch in blowout situations, which most of these, you know, position players pitching, that, that's in a blowout anyway um, yeah. or, or extra innings. But um, but now, you know, to, to, it's going to be difficult for teams to find the room to get a guy like Cronenworth, who's primarily an infielder, to get him the innings he needs to be a two-way player down the line. Yeah, so there's some positive and negatives to it, regardless, both ways you look yeah. at it. Hey, Anthony, uh, I understand that you wrote a book. Congratulations. It I comes book, out yeah. in, uh, in May. Uh, tell us what it's about. What's it called? Yeah, it's called A Fan's Guide to Baseball Analytics. You see the subtitle there. Basically, if you can read the cover of the book, you can read the book itself. It's, it's got a lot going on, a lot of words on the cover itself. But uh, this is, a, this is a, a, nerd, a guide to baseball's nerdy stats for non-nerds. Oh, I like by, this. I hope or think a non-nerd. It's written in, in plain English, I hope. Um, it's like, supposed to like be relatable baseball and for readable. dummies, somewhat. Yeah, kind of. Analytics for dummies, sabermetrics for dummies. Like sure, that. if you want to put it that way. Uh, I think it makes a particularly great Father's Day gift. Um, it comes out May 19th. And, yeah, it's it, listen, this is the way the game has gone and is continuing to go. And only in recent years we started to see even something as rudimentary as, as OPS on scoreboards. So, I mean, this is only going to grow in the coming years. And I understand the aversion to, you know, mathematical mumbo-jumbo and alphabet soup, et cetera. But... I, I think this book does a decent job of, of trying to explain in plain English what these numbers mean, how, how you relate to them, you know, what is, you know, what is a good OPS plus, what is a bad OPS plus, et cetera. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, make a good gift item for, for those baseball fans who have been 
uh, averse to anything other than batting average and RBIs, et cetera. Well, send a, like send a copy to all our analysts here. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Congratulations, man. We'll be looking forward Thank to you. that. Now, as you mentioned, uh, Hot Stove <clears throat> is coming to an end, and we always love yeah. the, the retrospectives, the year end, if you will. I understand you have a, a special category as well. Yes, it's our annual look at the great FaceTime moments on Hot Stove here <laughs> in the 2019-2020 offseason. Uh, congrats to all who qualified, but let's start with Tommy Pham. Now, if you listen... Yeah, you hear the dishes in the background. So I don't know if that's a disgruntled <laughs> chef at Tommy Pham's house or maybe they were packing up for San Diego. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, Brian McTaggart, my boy Brian McTaggart, has his diploma. I makes have you that feel degree. Comfortable. Yes, it makes you feel very comfortable and confident in his services, much like at a doctor's <laughs> office. So that's good to see. Pete Abraham, you, you look at Pete Abraham, you're thinking, man, this guy's in heaven. Look at this. This is unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it, it, uh, oh, and then there's Johnny Miller just <laughs> strolling by in the background, bringing you back down to earth. And then uh, our, our man Rex Hudler wow. giving us that rare glimpse into how broadcasters, oh boy. their off-season training regimen is obviously very intense at the Hudler <laughs> yoga class. That was a, a great thing to see. Oh, that's great. Uh, Gary Sheffield. <laughs> more HUD. We, we need more HUD in our life. Oh, look how sweaty he is. Uh, this is the best. And Gary Sheffield, this is I mean, the best. come on. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we could, I could try for years and not be as cool as Gary Sheffield. No one could. Look at Smoking that. a stogie at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then Chandler Rome covers From the Houston, the Houston Chronicle. Astros. The Houston Chronicle. Even the Astros beat writers are stealing signs. Look at that. He stole the speed limit sign. So. You know, when, when I saw – because I was watching that day. When I saw that, when I saw Chandler Rome, I was like, who is holding Chandler Rome hostage and how can we save him? Right. It was a very, very interesting backdrop there. Hey, uh, Anthony, congratulations on the book, man, that comes out in May. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, and good stuff as always. Thank you, guys.